we live in very exciting times and what i thought i would do today is very briefly go over the current status and future potential of genomic sciences and technologies in health and of course by science we mean knowledge by technology we mean application of such knowledge for human aims and obviously there is no aim of humans without society and considerations of the society so very briefly let me start with something that i believe to be very important which highlights the entire problems and the opportunities ahead of us this is the most expensive drug in the world it's called zolgensma it's a genetic disease drug spinal muscular atrophy it is also a relatively simple in terms of concept difficult in terms of execution a drug of oligonucleotides that if injected in time can prevent a child from future paralysis and severe disability so one of the questions one asks when one looks at drugs like this one injection early in life and the disease is stopped no injection no diagnosis early in life you can have a lifetime of great difficulties so what would it take in india for a baby born with this disorder to receive the diagnosis in a timely manner and also receive the treatment which is difficult as of today the one thing to realize is that economics drives this world in many ways and health services will drive the future economy already you can see if you take only services not health services almost everywhere in the world services are the biggest driver of the economy no longer agriculture even in a country like india over 10% of the world's gdp within services goes into healthcare far more than agriculture and this line is true for india as well <clears throat> healthcare is in fact now the largest industrial sector worldwide it's catching up in india it has the highest rate of growth its domestic value may reach about half trillion dollars by 2025 the key drivers of course have been an aging population growing incidence of lifestyle diseases but <clears throat> we must not forget that technological advancements themselves are a huge driver of the health economy as we go forward we will see penetration of health insurance universal health care ayushman bharat and all of these will further drive drive adoption of the latest technologies that may not have been possible today i don't need to speak to anybody about beyond economic strategic societal and scientific merits <clears throat> of health research and innovation in healthcare systems that goes without saying that there is a tremendous amount That's of slight like benefit the beauty even if at a scientific level you were to look at the big trends in biomedicine i've taken this from a 2019 issue of nature medicine you see six things big biomedicine read edit try genome technologies personalized medicine regenerative medicines immunotherapies and brain computer interface three of them can very clearly be linked to genomics let's see how if you start talking of big biomedicine you're talking about the confluence of big data ai biological research you're talking about things like the human cell atlas you're talking about international common diseases multiple genome initiatives what you're trying to do is understand health from the bottom up basically understand the blueprint and the bricks and use it to model the entire system and it starts with genes goes up to expression goes up to further molecular networks all of these of course will have proteomics and other omics on top of it but genomics in terms of the genes and their expression and of course epigenetics now forms a very very important part of what we do and very importantly it is not just about sequencing as you can see in this slide it is also very importantly about informatics the analysis of the data that comes out of genomics and other omics this is the only way we are going to progress forward and already this is one of the most rapidly expanding areas there is as of now from arrays to next generation sequencing everything exists in india technically we are not behind 
what we can do more of is you know greater emphasis on informatics and putting everything together and building the right medical human cohorts in which this data would make the most sense the expectation is that next generation sequencing in medicine and public health will soon become routine what is not yet obvious of course is that whether therapeutics will become routine over what frame of time already we are seeing that in some diseases like sickle cell disease where you can correct the hematopoietic stem cells and reengraft the bone marrow and base, basically get complete correction of the disease but this will extend further to other genetic diseases as well we might find the gene therapies may even have applications in people without genetic disease and i'll talk a little bit more about that later at a hardcore level it is not possible to create completely synthetic genomes and these headlines of recent papers show the type of development that is occurring it is already seen that in pediatric rare disease rapid whole exome sequencing facilitates better care and ultimately reduces healthcare costs i already talked to you regarding crispr cas9 gene editing for sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia but do remember these are hematopoietic problems and it's easier to correct them because you correct the bone marrow these entire things correct for more solid organs it's a little bit more difficult but there's nothing unachievable given the rate technology is expanding i'm going to spend a little bit time on this particular example to tell you the directions we are going i'm sure all of you know the people on the left sharpint here and outna who won the nobel prize for gene editing less people know the person on the right helen hobbs who discovered a natural mutation in pcsk9 is a beneficial mutation that lowers lipids and reduces cardiovascular risk already in monkeys we have got to the point where by gene therapy targeted to the liver you can get stable reductions in cholesterol and cardiovascular risks for years we are basically coming to a point where not only can genome editing and gene therapies be targeted towards disease causing mutations in genes but can be used to introduce benefit causing mutations in normal genes now this is of course a very slippery slope at what point would you say it is acceptable to create mutations that empower people and make them better than others in a sense of the word and at what point would we agree to introduce such mutations in a heritable way that future generations may become superior now that is a tricky concept which is best left to the intersection of science and humanities but is something that you must all think about when you look at the power and the potential but also the challenges of genomics particularly in terms of future equity india has massive advantages in genomics a large population size a very diverse genetic pool yet multiple small endogamous groups to the point that if you look at relatedness of parents how similar are mother and father of a child india has some of the sub populations where the similarity between parents is amongst the highest in the world which means genetic disease must be more common in such communities even without consanguinity so basically the study of genetic diseases the study of treatment of genetic diseases study in fundamental genomics are all expected to become increasingly important in time to come at igib we already have two programs that run hand in hand on one side we try to discover the genetic mutations in india causing diseases through next generation sequencing on the other side we try to deploy them towards actual tests for actual people using standard cheap pre available systems like pcr and pass them on to partner path labs like lal path labs so that they become available to the population my overall situation assessment is that india already has the basic technologies for most of genomics there is sufficient local demand for these existing technologies there has been a growth of an upper middle class with capacity to pay 
for higher value, but potentially lower uncertainty wellness products. We'll come a little bit to that later. But we also have now, <clears throat> for the first time, a national insurance scheme that could be used to scale low cost, high value screening and diagnostic measures of high confidence. All this comes alongside a global need for new technologies in genomics and genome informatics. So those of you who are not technology oriented, but rather basic science oriented, will find a lot that remains to be done in genomics. And there is a clear need within India for gene therapy and genetically engineered cell-based therapies that need indigenization. This indigenization is critical because many of these technologies are currently extremely high cost. And a lot of work, research work, needs to be done in India to bring it here. My colleagues at IGIB have been working on an indigenous CRISPR system. And we expect that within a few years, India will start the first trial in sickle cell disease therapeutics using CRISPR-based therapies. So if I were to say, what are the key areas in genomics s &T that are meritorious of immediate attention? I would say development of locally, application, locally applicable precision wellness services is one of them. Genomic tests for Indians, and also to my mind, for the many 15 million non-resident Indians across the world, Tests that help you screen for inherited disease risks. I told you about subcommunities with very high degree of relatedness between parents. Actual diagnostics for genetic disease. Wellness genomics in which you can give advice to people regarding what drugs, what lifestyle would suit them. An area I didn't speak much about in today's talk, but very, very important in genomics, microbial metagenomics. Genomics of the gut bacteria living in your body which outnumber your human cells. Those bacteria are critical determinants of health and people have shown in other studies outside this country that study of the microbiome can help give tailored nutrition advice regarding what may work better for optimal metabolism in people. And I think I've emphasized enough from my very first slide, there's a tremendous need for better genomic therapeutics, gene therapy and genome engineering within India. It is not just about enzymes and CRISPRs and oligonucleotides. It's about an entire ecosystem going all the way to chemistry to deliver these molecules in the right place. So whether it's students of biology or chemistry or even biophysics or people who simply want to model, I think there's a very important role for all of you in the future of genomics in the country. Go to the remaining talks for today. Thank you. <laughs>